This is a sad story of people living in Asebo in the central region of Ghana where their major source of income is planting oranges but at the moment there are no buyers of the oranges therefore the oranges are left to rot. Look at where I'm standing every single orange that you see my feet on is rotten. I mean it's left to rot because no one is buying at the moment but guess what two people decided to come together and change that narrative. This is why I keep on saying, even though agriculture is the backbone of this country, but value addition is something that I believe that so many Africans need to look into. This narrative needs to be changed, and I'm so glad that two people have decided to put their heads together to change the story of the people living in this community. Welcome to our, our citrus value chain processing, which begins from, from the farm, through um, haulage to the factory, to processing to the finished product. That's really incredible. Sure. You, you know, I always say that agriculture is the backbone of Ghana's economy, sure. but adding value actually sure, sure. has that's, more power. That's what, that's what we, we're trying to do here because um, there was a, a, a pity state here so many years ago, driving by, we saw a lot of oranges littering the, the ground. We're, we're wondering what's happening because oranges are much liked, oranges are expensive. And so you wonder why there's so much orange. So we got into the story and then we know there were deeper, deeper insights to these stories. So you come into the enclave itself and you find that most of the farms have actually been abandoned. Because there's no major processor here. So with all of these farms here, you know, they, they harvest and then uh, a small percentage will go to the farms, uh, to the market. And then there are, there are others that are waiting for buyers who are coming from as far as Cote d'Ivoire to buy them. It has its own challenges because by the time they get here, if you've harvested one, you've taken it off the fruit, the tree. So now it's begun its way down, down going bad. Then uh, these people, there's no contract, so they set up from Cote d'Ivoire and then they will just call you and say, we're coming this week. So what do you have to do? Because they will not come to your farms, you have to do all the harvesting and then dump by an aggregation site, by the roadside. So by the time the, the guys come here, it depends. Sometimes they don't come at all because they are moving their truck from Cote d'Ivoire and they are buying from all the way from Western region to this point and beyond. So if they get full along the line, then they leave you out there. So you go to the roadside and you see all that orange down by the roadside. So we thought uh, there had to be a need to change this narrative. Give value to it. Because uh, there have been some attempts in the past that haven't worked. So we said, okay, let us take a learning from all that has happened in the past and then do something that's going to be sustainable and change the life of the people. And that's what we're doing. Can we give them a round of applause? Man? Because you guys are really changing that narrative. Sure. Uh, listen, you all should need to do this for me. First of all, like this video and share this video so that others can have a piece of this. Because I believe that what these guys are doing, the world needs to hear about it. I mean, if I understand you, all these farms, especially where we are, used to be abandoned. Sure. So, so what, how you see abandoned, when, when you do a reclamation, you have all these creepers and other plants co cohabiting with the, with the citrus. So once we, we take over your farm, we, give, we, t we go under an agreement, a 10-year agreement to manage your farm for you. Wow. There's an agreed, agreed price to pay if you were doing it on your own. So we do that. And then we introduce the professionals to do all the cleaning, do all the agronomic practices so that the yield will come up. Some of these things are, are well over 30 years old. So if you don't give them the, the, the best of agronomic practices, you will not have the fruit in. So that's but what I believe that at the end of the day, you are empowering them. Because coming here is definitely a struggle. Sure. When you harvest, you have to carry it on your head to get to the roadside. So Which I'll give you the scenario. So this is uh, what, where we came from is about um, four or five kilometers. Yeah. Okay, so the, the road was bad because this was just a path. So what you see here used to be just a path that uh, we used to get to the farms deep down here. Um, so we brought in as part of our social community social impact program um, some raiders to be doing this road work. So in all, in these communities, 
we've done close to 200 of acres of these roads that go into the depths of the farm so we can have access to the, the citrus that is stuck here in the farms. So that's what we've been doing what, and we keep expanding. What do you mean citrus stuck in the farm? Okay, so, so these um, farms are, are deep into the, into the bush, not close to the community and it costs them so much to, to harvest and send to the roadside uh, which is referred to as the aggregation point from where the, uh, um, the buyers will come to, to get them. And normally the unfortunate thing is that they get to the roadside and then these buyers, some don't come, some don't come on time and all of that. So at the end of the day, you, you have a lot of oranges stuck by the roadside and going bad. So the farmer loses one on the, on the farm itself when, they, when he fruits and he has to do harvest, they will shed some here because they go bad. Then they, what they carry to the roadside, they will have to pay for it up front. So they keep paying, paying and waiting for uh, whoever the buyer is. By the time the buyer gets here, 40% of it has already gone bad. So they lose. So, I mean, it is no, no wonder that they abandon the farms. You know what? I don't believe you. I, uh, can I, I, just, I just need to see one abandoned farm right. and so, also get an owner of a farm sure. and just talk to them so that I'll get the real story. I mean, sometimes when you interview entrepreneurs like this, they will tell you all the sweet words. But for me to confirm my sweet words, I need to meet one person sure. who used to own a farm. <laughs> Mommy, what happened to your woman? Mm -hmm. We could try her band. I am how many years? Oh, I jump up on your number so I didn't try. Hey, up upon your you could know. And I also was sold. How many acres? 20. 20 acres. No, Matter was a 20 acres in the age out toward them. I would in a jar, Habana, up upon your yen, and we jam on a jar toward them. Now we smoke no way, and Papa no way now, which you are. No, Mamma is a tall. company <laughs> No, we are Kutahaba. Yeah, we are Kutahaba, Papa. What area has he? Pa, yeah. A Kutahaba, no, how many acres? My uncle is a mother, Papa, Paddy. Sixteen acres. No, I hear that I'm a company in this year. I am a hundred and one acre. Hundred and one acres, no, madam. I said, I jump off for different different. Damn naughty. No, the more at the more company. Sure, sure. It's not sure that the initiative young of a good initiative. Papa, 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 Bokaka for be more about our battle, and as I was starting about drawing your monoma. You know, she shall on your wash and be. Okay, one of the wash and away, one of the I am not my way. And what about I fine. I have been for how many years? About twenty two years. Wow. So, so the moment we saw how the oranges were doing by the roadside, we thought something should be done. And what could be done was to bring in a processor to take care of these, so that we don't get to this stage. So we don't get to this stage. How, 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 how do you feel right now, knowing that you've created something for people like this? So I feel fulfilled, um, only that I am yet to get to that point where there will be zero challenge. But we'll get there soon. You know what? All my life, I never knew that it's possible to grow passion fruits in Ghana. Yeah. To the extent that I saw my first ever passion fruit in Kenya. Ooh. Yeah. And I never knew they got it right here in Ghana. Right here. So as you can see, uh, we have passion right here because we use passion for um, an SKU, um, um, one of the varieties that we have of juices that we do. Wow. So what we do is to is to grow everything we use for the juice. So we grow our own passion.
But this is so huge. I mean, yes. uh, the ones that I saw in Kenya were, were smaller. smaller. Yes, yes. Okay, so um, one secret about this is that we've given them very good agronomic practice. So you can see the spacing. Yeah. Okay, so what it does is that it gives the, the, the plants more space to, to show out their flowers. You know, their flowers should get pollinated by the butterflies. So when you give them spacing like this, the butterflies come and then all the flowers are exposed to, to the pollination process instead of keeping them close, where some flowers will be hidden under the leaves, etc. So when they are all open and they, they get pollinated, then they get the fruits. What is the size of the whole passion fruit plantation? So this one, we have other sites, but this site has um, 360 acres wow. of passion, yes. So it's like different sites. It's not just sure. one place. No, so um, you don't want to do all at one point so that if there's a, there's a problem at that point, everything goes down. So we have different sites that we said that we have a 400 um, acre on one side. We had a 200 acre on another side. This is a 360. You guys don't want to make uh, coconut juice? No, so we'll get there. Because so <laughs> we'll get to another point where we, have, uh, we are planting coconut because we'll be doing juices out of coconut. But these are very old coconut trees, like over over aged coconut trees, oh. from which we we now had to get these planks, these two by four planks what? that we are using all over the place. So these were from the old coconut trees that we found here, those that are overripe and, and used up. Instead of just dumping them and burning them, we turn them into these two by four wood for. Then that's the planks we are using for the passion passion fruit. So all that you see here are either the coconut or bamboo that we can find here. So you see bamboo all over the place. Wow, that's, so that's really innovative. Utilization of uh, the resources. Ooh, that I, nev I never knew you can actually get two by four wood. Sure, from. this is very good wood that uh, some people use for building. Really? Yeah. I guess this is what you're talking about. Sure. These are rotten oranges. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Very sad. Be because this place was abandoned, as I mentioned. So when it, when it fruits and it gets ripe, it just drops to the ground. So this, for example, is a reclaimed farm. So after reclaiming, then we can, we can get what is remaining on the trees while we proceed with the, the agronomic practice. So from next year, we're going to get the best of, of fruits coming from the side. I guess this is how a typical abandoned orange farm looks like. Because I can see a ripe orange out there. Yeah. Definitely. This has been abandoned for about eight years. Eight years. Yes, and you know the citrus farmers had no hope any longer, even attending to their farms. So they even started cutting them off until we set in. That's it. So we are bringing them hope after we have cut. Them. Before you set in, this road looks new. Yeah, yeah. Are you guys? This it's part of our project. Uh, okay. Yeah, because we need to have access to our farms. Yep. Yeah, because yep. they have it even difficult when they even harvest those farms. They have it difficult to transport them to, to the roadside for, for, for buyers to come for them. Mm -hmm. So we need to create access routes to almost all our farms so we can do proper harvesting. Yeah. See, this, this is money. See? There were insects in it coming out. I want to say God bless you guys for giving hope to the people of this village and also empowering them because I see young people working in there. I see a woman that I interviewed, she was so happy that the fact that her farm is now back to life. That, so that, in, in total, how many acres of um, orange farm have you guys claimed so far? For now, um, we have about 5,000 registered acres, estimated. All the 5,000 were abandoned? They were all abandoned because the farmers had no, absolutely no hope. Because when they harvest and put them by the roadside, the buyers will take them two weeks, one month before they come. By the time they come, everything is already rotten. So they decided not to waste their resources. Look, they, they will employ people to go and harvest. They employ people to go and carry the fruit to the roadside, and the buyers will not come. So that cost also goes to them. So in the fair, they decided not to even attend to the farm at all. Mm. So they totally abandoned most of the farms. But once we are in, they have hope. They have hope. Does, does it mean that the same company employs these people? Sure. So we've given life to, to these youth who ordinarily were not even interested in the farming because they've seen their parents um, as citrus farmers 
all their lives. And then, I mean, the impact is, is about zero. So now when we came in, we trained them. So these are guys we have trained. Mm. We're not, many of whom were not even interested in agri at all, mm. but they use machinery. So we get to one point and you see how they use machinery to do the weeding and all of that, they're spraying, they're pruning. So a lot more are coming on board uh, to, to work as our, our gang teams here and some on their own parents' farms. So their parents get paid for the oranges and then they, they, are, they are, the youth also get paid for working on the farms. That's, it's part of the model we are building. That's awesome, but, but, but this is really sad and I'm so happy the fact that you guys brought this initiative sure. to change lives in here. You see, you see so many oranges on it's the It's a floor. sad story here, it's a sad story here, but the narrative uh, um, oh, has changed oh. and it's going, to, it's going to change some more in the coming year. Do you, then I guess like in so many areas in Ghana, we need value addition. Well, when we take the primary product into the market, we are not doing anything. What we have to do is to, is to give it a new life by taking it through value addition. So we have to go through the full value chain from, from agronomy right through production to the shelf. And that's what we're doing here. I'm not seeing a factory around me. So, so we have, um, we're setting up a 15 um, ton per hour factory here in our Sable Enclave to take care of all of these and more. Can you please take me there? So Maya, yeah. uh, this is a game changer. Um, for all that we, you saw, this is where we're going to do our production. This is a 15 ton per hour processing machine. We're going to process orange juice here. And uh, more to that, we're going to process citrus oil here in this factory. And that's going to change, uh, com complete the cycle of the change of the narrative in a same. You, you don't think there, there's going to be more orange farmers now? <laughs> Woo! So, so that's, that's the story now. Yeah. So when we began, there was this uh, wait and see attitude from the farmers. So, yeah. you know, when we brought in our farming management scheme, people were like, let's wait and see. But now, every day, every hour, there's a knock on our door that we want to join. So as we told you, we're working on about 6,000 acres for now, but we have a request for more and more. Very soon, we're going to take down a lot of the trees that are very old. So as you saw from the, from the nursery, we are bringing in new, new variety, new trees to give new life to the citrus industry and to this enclave. But, but, but why this enclave? I mean... So this has been a, um, an enclave that does oranges for, for God knows how long. It's been so long. This is known as an, en uh, an orange enclave. So we do orange, lime, lemon, tangerine, all of that hmm. here in this hmm. belt, right? Stretching from Asin Fosu right down to this point and then off to Komenda area. This is a citrus enclave. And we thought, I mean, doing citrus, you can only site your factory in the enclave. Yep. Yeah, close to your... your, bring, your bring, bring in production close to the sure, farmers. Sure, sure. Believe me or not, this definitely worth a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I told the rich people in Africa, dress so <laughs> simple. And they don't brag, you know, that's why they have me. But I just want to know, yeah? yeah? Did you guys fund this one too? Okay, so for this, we got funding from the Agriculture Development Bank, mm. ADB in Ghana, mm. to, to set up this factory. I, I believe that the bank trusted you because of your track record. Sure. So mm. we, we, um, with the Kumfi mm. uh, angle, I mean, we've, we've, we've now shown what we can do. Okay. And um, what we can do with, with fruits, giving them value to the pack that we saw. So um, we, as a Kumfi, decided to consult for Central Citrus, and this is the result. I, I believe that... 10 years to come, we'll have so many of these factories across Ghana. Sure, so what we want to do now is to share our experience as much as possible to grow many of these because um, we are still not filling the shelves. There's still so much space for occupation. Um, the shelves are still welcoming foreign products, etc. that we, we, need to, we need to take off. So we are encouraging a lot of these to, to come up and we are willing and ready to join up. I believe the goal is to make sure that we no longer consume foreign goods in the country. So what we are doing is to, is to give of the world best, which is, which is also equally best for Ghana. Yep. So um, what we are putting out there is, um, is juice, which is juice in the real sense of the word. Juice should be an extract of the fruit only. 
no additive, no conservative. So that's, that has been our business philosophy, and that is what we, we're trying to spread out. So very soon we're going to have all these juices from Ghana that are zero preservative, zero concentrate, zero whatever, with no drop of water, the syrup of the, the, the fruit itself. So when we say juice, we mean juice. What do you think is going to happen when we have more of these value addition factories in the country? So first of all, the health of the people, which is important to us, is, is paramount. Second is job creation. Mm. And then third is value addition, so that when we have to even export some of these things out, we gain also foreign exchange to, to, to balance up the economy. Mm. So what we're doing here, you can see the construction is uh, ongoing. Um, a major part of the, the machines already installed as we finish up here. So here we have our water bath where our fruits will come in here. Well, we, we treat the fruits like human beings. When we detach them, within a few hours it has to come through this water therapy. So water therapy is what, the, what, what cools down the temperature. It's like um, a baby coming from the mother. The umbilical cord has just been broken. So this is wow. just of what we're going to have. Yeah, I believe this is bigger than a Kufi factory. Sure, sure. This is, this is far bigger in terms of, in terms of the capacity. Okay. Although Kufi is also building its capacity more than it is. But as this one stands, it is uh, one and a half the Kufi size in terms of the, the production capacity and even the, the working area. What is the size? Okay, so, so this on... one is doing around 6,000 um, square meters. For us, Kufi is doing 5,000 square meters. But okay. in terms of production capacity, a kufi is doing 10 tons per hour, but this is doing 15 tons per hour. When do you think the factory will be running? So the first point of installation has been done. Uh, we need another 60 days to complete the installation. So give or take by um, October, we should be running. When I, when I spoke to the farmers, they told me that the contract has already been signed. Sure. Which means that you guys are already producing are you using here or using the other side? So what is happening is that this extractor yeah. is ready. So at least we can juice here and sell the juice okay. to, to another, another producer. But this company will also be doing its own juice. Okay. So that is when they have a full complement of the machinery. So for now, we have the contract. We do still do the harvesting and we bring them here to the process only the juice. Okay. So we can sell the juice. All right. That's really impressive. Very. I can't wait to come here to see workers in here. And uh, here. I'm so glad to be the first blogger in here. So you guys should appreciate him by liking this video. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. Thanks so much. And man. I'll see you Thanks, next time. Thank you. Thanks so much.